Despite the more modern name for it, urban legends have fascinated people for centuries. Before the days of the internet, they were the stories told around a campfire, during a sleepover, or even gossip about strange things that were spread among people living in a village, town, or even country. The urban legend that we will be looking at in this video is one of the most enduring video game urban legends. An arcade game that was said to have been part of a government-run psychology experiment based in Portland, Oregon. Polybius. The story goes that a new arcade game would suddenly appear in the suburbs of Portland, Oregon in 1981. A black cabinet that housed a new game called Polybius. This new game was unlike anything anyone had seen before, and it quickly became popular. Very popular. To the point of addiction. Lines would form around the machines, and fights would break out over who would play next. People were playing the game obsessively, but that wasn't the worst of it. Because people who played the game would supposedly suffer from various side effects. This would include symptoms such as nausea, migraines, memory loss, seizures, high levels of stress, and even nightmares. And some people would report feeling as though they could no longer control their own thoughts. The arcades that housed the game would often be visited by men wearing black coats that said that they were there to examine the machines. They were not interested in collecting the money, Rather, they would either stand by and take notes on clipboards while watching the people playing the game, or they would come by after hours to collect the data directly from the console. In some variations of this tale, the game seemed to have a mind of its own. On some occasions, the players didn't even need coins to play the game, it would just start up as soon as someone was near it. The console would supposedly also continue to work, even after it was unplugged or shut down. The release of the game was very limited. Only two or three arcades housed the game, and it was only there for a short time. Approximately one to two months after the game suddenly appeared, it vanished, without a trace, and was never seen again. The very first appearance of this story was in an online forum in 1998 on Usenet, which was a predecessor to the internet that we know today. The story would then resurface on February 6th, the year 2000, when a listing for the game popped up on coinop.org, which is a digital museum and database for arcade gaming. This listing mentions that there were bizarre rumors about this game being developed by the CIA and how men in black coats would come by to collect records of the game. Then, in September 2003, an issue of GamePro would feature the game in an article on video games that was called Secrets and Lies, which is the first non-printed mention of the Polybius game. The article would declare the existence of this game to be inconclusive, which only added to the mystery of this story. But as enduring and widely spread as this story of this game is, the story of Polybius is not widely believed. The reason for this is that there's too little evidence to suggest that the game ever existed. For instance, there is no real evidence that the game cabinets ever existed, though some might argue that since the game had such a limited release, it's not surprising that there's no real evidence of it. There's also no video footage of the game, or any copyright on file for the game. There have been people who claimed that they had ROM downloads of the game, though none of these have been verified. There is also the fact that the people who claim to have seen this game give conflicting accounts on what the game was like. 
Some say that Polybius was like a prototype 3D shooter, while others say that it was more like a fixed shooter type game. The developer of the game is also a mystery. The game was supposedly developed by a company called Sinuslöschen, roughly translating to something like sense deleting or sensory deprivation in broken German. Though I have to say, the word is very similar to the Swedish word sinuslös, which means senseless, so perhaps that's a better translation. But just like the game itself, there is no evidence that this company ever existed, not in Germany, the United States, or even Japan. As for the blank cabinet that supposedly housed the game, these did exist, as they were utilized as test machines for new games. New games that didn't even have a working title or even artwork. All of these would not be applied until the arcade cabinets were ready for a wide release. And in the 1980s, Portland served as a test market for new arcade games. At the time, it was very common to go into an arcade and see these blank cabinets in the arcade as they were new games waiting for a wider release. I should also mention that arcades themselves were viewed in a very negative light as many people saw them as seedy places where a lot of drug use took place and where illegal gambling rings were operated. As for the gameplay of Polybius, some say that the conflicting accounts of the game is because people are not recalling Polybius, but some other game that came out in the early 1980s. One such game was called Cube Quest, which was released in arcades in 1983. Cube Quest used 3D animated polygon style graphics over the top of an image that was played back from a laser disc. And the game had gameplay that was said to be very similar to the descriptions of Polybius. Laser disc technology would often need to be repaired by technicians. People would often see men working on these cabinets in the arcades which might serve as an explanation for the men in dark coats who showed up to collect data from the Polybius game. Another game often listed as a possible culprit for the Polybius legend is an arcade game called Tempest. Tempest is a 1981 arcade game that was developed by Atari. When playing the game, you control a yellow shooter that travels along the outside rim of a three-dimensional tunnel, shooting enemies down the alleys of the tunnel while avoiding any coming down the alleys. And this tunnel will take on many different forms. Tempest was the first game to allow players to choose their starting level, which increased the maximum starting level depending on the player's performance in the previous game. This essentially allowed player to continue the previous game, which was very unusual for the time. Tempest was also one of the first video games with a progressive level design where the levels themselves varied. In the early 2000s, when the legend started spreading, more and more people became curious about the game, and soon people began theorizing if there really could have been a government-conducted experiment of some kind, where they had a game that sent subliminal messages to the players. And with the endurance of urban legends or conspiracy theories, it's not surprising that the story of Polybius would both appeal and horrify people. Conspiracy theories were nothing new, not even in the 80s. For years, there were people saying that the government was brainwashing people or even using drugs to control people. And for years, this was dismissed as nothing but ridiculous conspiracy theories. But then, in the early 2000s, around the same time as the story of Polybius started spreading, a project called MKUltra was declassified. Or, to be more specific, some of the surviving information was declassified in 2001. The project was first brought to public attention in 1975 by the Church Committee of the United States Congress and the Rockefeller Commission. But there were not a lot of information about it because the CIA director, Richard Helm, had given an order that all MKUltra files be destroyed in 1973. 
So we don't have all the documents on MK Ultra, only a few because a lot of it has been destroyed. MK Ultra on its own is too big of a subject and a bit too complicated to go into in detail in this video, but to summarize, the project was an illegal human experimentation program that was designed and undertaken by the CIA. The intention was to develop procedures and to identify drugs that could be used during interrogations. With the declassification of the MK Ultra project, it turned out that many of the conspiracy theories about governmental mind control were actually true, to an extent anyway. With that in mind, it becomes even more likely that people became drawn to the story of Polybius. So now Polybius on its own was just another example of a government experiment, or maybe even an extension of MKUltra. For as long as video games have existed, there have been arguments that these games are either harmful to the people playing them, or might cause them to become more violent. And it didn't exactly help that in the early 1980s, there were reports of people getting sick while playing video games. For instance, in 1981, a 12-year-old boy named Brian Morrow would experience severe stomach pains after playing asteroids for 28 hours straight. Though this had less to do with the game and more to do with the fact that he had been drinking soda for those 28 hours. That same year, another young boy, 14-year-old Michael Lopez, would suffer from a migraine and threw up in the parking lot after a long session of playing Tempest. And the name of the game, Polybius, may have been selected for a very specific reason as well. Polybius was actually a real person, an ancient Greek philosopher who was born around 208 BC in Megalopolis, which was in Arcadia in ancient Greece. He is most known for his work called The Histories, which is a universal history documenting the rise of Rome in the Mediterranean in the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC. He is also known for being responsible for a useful tool in telegraphy that allowed letters to be easily signaled using a numerical system, which is called the Polybius Square. This tool also lends itself to cryptographic manipulation and stenography, and the name Polybius means many lives. Very fitting for a video game. So, to summarize, in the 1980s, arcades were seen as seedy places with illegal gambling and people doing drugs. Portland, Oregon was used as a testing ground for new games. Two young children had gotten hurt while playing video games and conspiracy theories about the government had existed for a long time, even during the 1980s, especially after events like the Roswell incident. With all of these factors in mind, it's not difficult to see where the legend got started. While some urban legends and even conspiracy theories have been proven to be true, it does seem like the story of Polybius is just that, a story. No first-hand account of the game or real proof of the game's existence has been found. A Freedom of Information Act request has been made to the FBI regarding this game, and in their response, the FBI wrote that they could not find anything in their archives regarding this game. Still, there are those who maintain that Polybius was a real game in 1981 that attempted to modify the behavior of those who played it and caused harm to many of those who played it. But many others are convinced that this game is nothing but a myth. The best and most believable myths are those rooted in reality. In the case of Polybius, the reality may be that the story is nothing but an amalgamation of different factors rather than a real thing that existed, but who can say for sure. Despite the dubious existence of the game, it does have a strong presence in pop culture. Polybius has appeared in many TV shows, such as The Simpsons. It has also inspired other video games and there have been numerous fan games attempting to recreate the game from the accounts of how the game looked and how it played. 
For instance, in 2007, developer Rogue Synapse created a free game based on the rumored descriptions of Polybius, which intended to simulate the rumored gameplay of Polybius. And in 2017, developer Llamasoft released their version of Polybius for PlayStation 4. But this game only used the urban legend as inspiration and had no intention of replicating any of the rumored gameplay. Regardless of the truth of the story, Polybius remains one of the oldest and most enduring urban legends regarding video games.